After 10 years, it's finally concluded. The Attack on Titan series finale just aired last night. And as I've mentioned in the past, this is one of the only shows I've ever watched week by week as it aired during its seasons. It started when I was a young virgin male in college going through my own mysterious anime character phase where I have no doubt I frightened all of my peers into thinking I was some unhinged psychopath. And now a decade later I've shed that skin, I'm no longer a young virgin male, I'm an elder sexual deity. Man, what a journey it's been. You're not going to believe me, but I was actually able to avoid all of the spoilers for this ending. Which is no easy task, that's like trying to dodge the rain during a thunderstorm. But I did it, and I deserve to be knighted for that achievement. There were so many people that were trying to spoil this for everybody, just a lot of people shaking their fist, bah humbug, I didn't like the manga ending so now I want to make sure everyone who only watches the anime is ruined for it. And douchey of course, but not unexpected, it happens all the time. I did not know the ending, luckily. All I knew is that there were a ton of people that were extremely dissatisfied with the way that it wrapped up in the manga, and that of course made me very worried about how the anime would stick the landing or if it would just fumble and flop like a lot of other anime endings. But I'm happy to say that this was a beautifully fitting ending. I don't think it was perfect, there are still a few criticisms I have of it, but overall I think it is an incredibly strong finish to what I believe is a masterpiece of a show. Not just a masterpiece of anime, a masterpiece of a show in general. I really hold this series in high regard and I am so satisfied with the way that it completes itself here and it makes me wonder what the fuck went wrong in the manga uh, like was the community just smoking on stupid juice or something on that scooby-doo dick kush like i don't understand exactly what they didn't like about the ending because i went back and checked apparently the ending in the manga is pretty similar to the ending in the anime that just aired only the anime had a couple of tweaks a couple of additions and a few minor adjustments but nothing major the story beats are still, for the most part, the same from what I can tell. So why were people pissing and shitting over the manga ending? It's a good, satisfying conclusion. The only theory I can formulate up here in my smooth little brain is that people just wanted a 100% happy ending where everyone wins, it's all sunshine and rainbows, and the world is perfect. And that would never be the case in a series like this. If they did go that direction with a happy ending, it would ruin Attack on Titan. It would run counter to everything that this series has propped up and framed. And I am so glad they didn't take that easy cop-out method. Because they did have a chance. With the way- I don't want to get into spoilers here, but they did have the opportunity to just pull their punch and say, eh, actually everyone's okay, everything's great, uh, happy ending, you know, wee woo -hoo. And I'm so glad they didn't do that. Like, this is not a story that deserved a happy ending. This is one that needed a grim but hopeful ending. Something the show has driven home time and time again. That no matter what you do, there will always be conflict, but there can also always be hope. And I love the way that they finish on that note. You can boil it down even simpler into basically, war never changes, humans are just predisposed to it, no matter how large the conflict is, no matter how great the resolution is or how long the period of peace is, it's only a matter of time until the cycle starts over again, which is what the post credit scene alludes to in the finale as well. I just think it is a beautiful, beautiful piece. I, I, I think it is an extraordinary work. Now, I do want to talk about it, but I don't want to give too many spoilers, but there's no way I can talk about it without at least slapping my feet around in the spoiler pool. I can't tiptoe around a lot of the things I want to talk about, so... This is your spoiler warning here. Uh, proceed with caution, bitch. So anyway, everything this show has done up till this point, I think has been executed perfectly. The slow transition of Eren from the hero everyone roots for with a very simple shonen goal of I want to kill every titan so the world is safe, and to take an idea that simple of I want to kill every titan so the world and my friends are safe, and to morph it into what he's become here with basically a genocidal maniac is so incredibly risky but done so well that I think it is probably the best example I've ever seen of a hero falling from grace. And the way the finale handles this character, Aaron Yeager, it blew my mind. So 
This entire last season, leading up to this as well, Aaron has become kind of like this cold calculating monster who's going to destroy the entire world so that way his friends are safe and the people he cares about are safe. He deduces the only way to keep his people alive is by killing everybody else, basically. So that way, you know, there's no one left, thus there's no war, there's no one to attack them anymore. And at its core, that is the exact same idea he had when he was a child. Kill all the titans. But over time, it changes into kill everyone, because it's the only way to keep the people I care about safe. He is still a raging child, fundamentally, with the same goals. And in the finale, we finally get to see him, you know, without the mask on. He no longer has that facade of being a stoic, uncaring menace. We get to see him break down, cry, and we get the whole kit and caboodle. When Armin talks to him, Aaron reveals that he is still just a fucking idiot that found a lot of power. He even says that word. He says he is a garden variety idiot who fell into a lot of power. And the only answer he has to any of the problems in the world is rage. He says that he is a slave to freedom. He can't escape his very nature, which is just a dumb idiot whose only answer to anything is violence. He never changed. He has always been a kid, basically, who is having a temper tantrum. But he gets so much power that that temper tantrum changes the entire world. And I've seen a bit of criticism over that scene, like, why would Aaron start crying? This goes so against his character. And it's like you're not even watching the show, or you're watching it with just your brain turned off and clapping at all the flashy animation. Like, this is very in line with his character from the very beginning. He is the only character in the show that just doesn't change at all. His number one priority in the world was the protection and safety of his friends, but he even admits in the finale that he got so lost and his brain so messed up from all of this power that he wasn't even sure if his friends were going to survive, to which he had so much regret. But one thing that I found extremely interesting here, and I can't help but draw a mirror to my favorite anime, well, what was my favorite anime, I think Attack on Titan is now going to be my favorite because I, I really do think they did nail the ending, Code Geass. Code Geass ends, this is spo big spoilers, Code Geass ends with our main character Lelouch being the ultimate villain, the biggest villain the world has ever seen, and he allows a symbol of hope to kill him. It was all part of his plan. Him and his best friend Suzaku, who is now wearing the original disguise of Zero, who becomes a symbol of hope, stabs Lelouch publicly in front of everyone, killing him, thus ending the evil, this cycle of hatred. All right then and there, hope prevails, and Zero is the hero, basically. In Attack on Titan, Eren had a similar motive that he unveils to Armin at the end. He wanted to be the ultimate evil, which he was. He destroyed 80% of humanity in the fucking rumbling, literally trampling them under his feet. And he wanted Armin and Mikasa, all of them, to kill him so that they would be the heroes. They would be the most important people in history because they stopped Aaron Yeager, the ultimate destroyer. And I just thought that was so beautiful. And, it, like, again, it, it draws an obvious comparison to the way Code Geass ends, in my opinion, but I really think they fucking nailed that concept. And, and it's not like it came out of nowhere. That does feel like something Eren would want to do. And then when he gets all of this power, he mentions that his mind is scrambled. It's a mess because with the power he has, he sees the past and the future all happening simultaneously. And it leads to him basically being this puppet master that makes sure that the future plays out the way that he's experiencing it in his head. And he says he's tried so many times to like change things, but it always plays out exactly the same. It's a really interesting explanation for how things work, but it does bring me to a criticism I have of it. The way they execute this exposition, I think, is way too jumpy. They jump all over the place abruptly. So it happens during a very climactic moment in the finale, and then it immediately starts jumping to start piecing together the puzzle of what the fuck is actually happening in, in terms of Eren's motivation, in terms of Ymir, in terms of everything overarching in the world, how it all takes form and shape. And I don't really like how much it jumps around. I think there definitely could have been a smoother way of doing it, so that way it wouldn't be as 
convoluted. Of course, it was always going to be a little complicated because of just how big the story is with so many moving parts. But I think by having it jump from different time periods, like Armin and Eren as kids, and now all of a sudden here's like an alternate reality that could have happened with Mikasa and Eren, instead of just jumping all over the place, if they had just streamlined that a little bit more to feed you these explanations, I think it would have just gone over better and would have led to a little bit less confusion. But it's not the biggest deal in the world. It's actually very aesthetically pleasing, and it's pretty beautiful a lot of the places they revisit while doing this exposition. But I just think that it led to a little more confusion than it needed to. Now, while I do think it is a little hard to follow with all the jumpiness, what they actually deliver is extraordinary. So I mentioned that alternate timeline with Mikasa and Eren, and I think that is such an important thing that a lot of people are overlooking. So basically what happened in one timeline, Mikasa confessed her love to Eren, and it causes him to abandon the rumbling, no longer going scorched earth, and instead the two run away to a cabin to spend the last four years of Eren's life together. And what this showcases is that, well, Eren obviously saw what has and will happen, but Mikasa confessing her love is enough to get him to not go through with it. But by not going through with it, it doesn't stop death, destruction, and ruin from happening. It still happens, but Eren's not the one doing it. It's Marley. The choice was basically Eren commit genocide and save the people that he cares about, or do nothing, go live with Mikasa in a cabin, and let Marley commit genocide, and now the people he cares about are the victims. And they prop up so many mirrors to previously very important moments in the show during these sequences, and it's so unbelievably fucking beautiful and well done. It really is. But the important thing that this sequence highlights is that Mikasa not confessing her love to Eren is what allows him to go through with the rumbling, but he only ever had two choices, basically. Either he commits genocide or Marley, and the, the thing that basically decides that is whether or not Mikasa tells him that she loves him. So it just highlights the importance of her keeping her feelings to herself because then Eren goes through with this plan. I don't want to get hung up just breaking down each incredible scene here, but I'll, I'll go ahead and summarize. I think what Attack on Titan has done is something incredibly special. That puts it up there with probably one of my favorite stories ever told in general. Again, this isn't just exclusive to anime, this is one of my favorite stories ever told. And the anime from start to finish, I think, encapsulates everything beautifully. Even if you just like action, Attack on Titan delivers in a big way. The finale has some of the best action sequences in the entire show. Uh, in the finale, while they're fighting on the back of Eren, there's every other generation of Titan that's ever really existed, pretty much, getting thrown into the mix and fighting off our characters to protect them. It's really great fighting, it's beautifully animated, they didn't cut any corners. I love that. But it's more than just action. Attack on Titan just offers a really thought-provoking piece in a very, very beautifully constructed world filled with interesting characters. I just, I love what they've done with it. Uh, and also, the music to accompany everything from the very beginning of the show has been extraordinary, top-notch. In the finale, it's the same. Great soundtrack. It's just such banger, boner jam after boner jam. I think... Attack on Titan is probably my favorite anime now. It's able to dethrone Code Geass, which has been my favorite for a very long time, but I am comfortable in saying that now at the very top for me is Attack on Titan. It's a show that means a lot to me. Again, this is one of the only shows I've ever watched like week by week as it's aired during its seasons, and now that it's concluded, it feels a little weird. Knowing that there's not going to be Attack on Titan, the final season, part 3.5, final chapters, part 1 of the final series, or whatever other wild naming scheme they would have come up with, it's... It feels like a little upsetting. I've never really had that feeling of when you finish a really good series where you're like left a little upset about it. But now I get it. I get it. Like, seeing that this is concluded now is bittersweet, because I think it's a great, fitting, beautiful ending to an extraordinary show. But damn, I, I you just always want more, I guess. But yeah, overall, I think this is a must-watch. I really do. I, I think even if you're not an anime fan, Attack on Titan is an absolute must-watch series. It's so fucking good, and I'm extremely pleased with the ending. 
I don't know what all the hubbub was about with the manga ending. Maybe they really made some missteps somewhere in there, but whatever missteps there were in the manga, they are not present in the anime. Uh, I can say that with confidence. So yeah, anyway, that's really about it. So yeah.